We begin today with air travel and automation annoyance. One family's story. Perhaps you decided to travel this summer after two summers of COVID restrictions that made it seem more trouble than it was worth. Our families are right there with you. With our kids now 8, 11, and 12, this summer seemed like the perfect time to take them on their first big trip overseas. After comparing airfares and schedules, we decided to fly Air France to Italy. And despite all sorts of airline troubles in the news, from a pilot shortage to high gas prices to a passenger surge, we got to Florence with virtually no problems. Had a great time. Kids got some culture, amazing food, educational sites, and we got to experience the joy of the Italian people, towns, and seaside. So far, fat in a thousand. Then came the trip home. I will spare you the details of Air France's disorganization, lack of communication, long delays, and so on. The good news is we landed safely at JFK and we're grateful for our safe return. By the way, the Air France airport and airplane staff were all lovely. Then we went to baggage claim. For the first time, we had traveled with five bags. Normally, we do three. One for me, one for Doug, and one for the kids. But they're getting older, and so we got them each their own little roller bag so they could pack their own things and be responsible for their own stuff. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Thus, we checked five bags. At JFK that Saturday evening, we waited at the baggage carousel. You know that feeling when the bags finally start pouring out of the feeder down onto the conveyor belt. Anticipation, trepidation, some pressure to get a good spot on the receiving line, testing your reflexes in order to ensure that you can get in and get out when your treasure rolls by. We waited patiently as time and our bags, we hoped, would pass. And bit by bit, our discouragement swelled. We waited and we waited. And can I tell you, not a single one of our five bags appeared. Not one. I mean, you have to hand it to Air France. It's not like they failed on one tiny kid's roller. All five bags, nary a trace. We obsequiously approached the baggage claim agent. If we kill him with kindness, it will surely improve our chances of recovery, right? He was a nice enough guy, but it turns out he did not work for Air France. He worked for JFK baggage services. He told us we needed to fill out a claim for each bag and that JFK would deliver them to us once they arrived. Good news, the team there told us. It looks like your bags are on Air France 8. That's the very next flight. They'll be here in three hours. Great. Phew. What's more, JFK baggage services said that they would deliver the bags right to our home once they arrive. You will? Really? That's awesome. Thank you so much. We left the airport feeling confident we would be reunited with the bags shortly. JFK baggage told us exactly that. I mean, why wouldn't we be confident? All in all, a great trip and a safe ride home. And we knew our bags would be home shortly. Woke up the next morning and like a kid looking for the first winter snow, I anxiously peered out the window. Sure, I would see our five old banged up friends sitting at our front door. No worse for the wear. Not one, as it turned out, not even one bag was out there. So much for Air France 8. I tried calling the JFK baggage services, got the number they had given me, ready with my claim and my baggage numbers, and no one picked up. Got voicemail. Left one with all the relevant details. No one called me back. A couple of hours later, left another voicemail. And then another. And then another. And then I stopped leaving voicemails and just kept calling, hoping a human would eventually pick up. And calling and calling. Guess how many times I called? 83 times. After nearly 100 calls, someone finally picked up and had absolutely no idea where our bags were. There was no record of them in the system at all. Only Air France knew. You're going to have to call them. Click. Okay. Air France. How exactly does one call Air France lost baggage services? We Googled it and found there is no calling them. There is only their online baggage search tool. Okay, we'll do that. And we'll keep calling JFK Baggage Services just in case something shows up there. My call list to that number, by the way, at JFK looks like something out of a criminal stalker file. I'm not proud. <laughs> it would not pick up. Now, it's not like we had the Mona Lisa in our bags. But we were sad at the thought of losing them. There lots of mementos in there from the trip, the kids' travel journals with their little handwritten notes and memories. Got a caricature of the three kids in Rome. 
my little guy's mini statue of the David. <laughs> there were Father's Day presents that the kids cobbled together, which were super fun because we realized too late that Italy doesn't celebrate Father's Day in June. It was stupid stuff, really, right? But also kind of sentimental. And obviously plenty of clothes and jewelry and so on. Day after day, we waited, waited for word. I called the JFK baggage services relentlessly, only to get the answering machine each time, and waited and waited for word on our Air France claim. Our travel agent friend tried to contact Air France for us, too, with absolutely zero luck. <laughs> no one could break through their fortress of non-humans. On the bright side, one bag did arrive at JFK. Hooray! On the dark side, the JFK folks still had zero record of our other bags and had no idea where they might be. Finally, I did something I've only done one other time in the 14 plus years I have been on Twitter. I tweet shamed a company. On Tuesday, June 28th, I tweeted the following at Air France. Me. Hey, at Air France, you managed to lose all of our bags. Of course, it is impossible to get a human being to help us. I realize you're busy disappointing, well, everyone, but how about some assistance? I checked and checked my replies. Nothing. It's like my teenage years all over again. Finally, as the day ended, a response. Someone from Air France. A guy named Guillaume. He told me how sorry Air France was to read my tweet. And then an offer to help. Can you please send us a DM with as much information as possible and include your reference number and full contact details? We will do our best to solve this. Signed, Guillaume. Nice. Now we're getting somewhere. The personal touch. Just Guillaume. Just Guillaume and me. Like we're on a first name basis now. But wait, how could I DM Guillaume without his last name? Hmm. That's a problem. Oh, wait, he wants me to DM Air France. Well, that's not as good. Well, maybe he checks their Twitter account. And maybe he's promising to personally follow up somehow. Now that Guillaume and I are first name basis friends, I do feel better. I do as instructed. I send him everything. The whole story, the claim number, the baggage numbers, all of it. A response pops up immediately. Guillaume? Hello, I'm Louis, your Air France virtual assistant. And I'm here to guide you, smiley face. What can I help you with today? Me. Where is Guillaume? He asked that we contact him directly. Air France, do you have a question about an existing booking? Me, did you read our earlier DM? Air France, you can talk to one of our assistants who will do their best to answer you as soon as possible. Waiting time may vary. For an immediate and personalized answer, you can also chat with me, Louis, Air France virtual assistant. Chat with, and then the message ends. Chat with whom? What's my other option? There's no knowing because it's blank. Just chat with dot, dot, dot. Me. How can we reach Guillaume? <laughs> Air France. Okay, let me pass you over to one of our agents who will get back to you as soon as possible. I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe we're getting somewhere. It's not exactly Guillaume, but they are passing me on to one of our agents. That's something, right? One of our agents is something. More from Air France, they write. Please note, that due to a large number of requests, we are unable to respond to you within a satisfactory time frame. I mean, on some level, you have to respect their honesty. We are unable to respond to you within a satisfactory time frame. Not like we might be unable, you know, we, we hope we're able, just we can't do it. A point for candor, though, it does also look a little bit like a typo, so I can't be sure. Anyway, back to the good news. I have a new and promising relationship with, quote, one of our agents who will be getting back to me as soon as possible, albeit not within a satisfactory time frame. I'll take it. Wait, more comes in from Air France. If you wish to modify, cancel your trip, or request a refund, you can do so on our website in the My Bookings section. Me. Wait, what? Air France. For all other questions related to COVID-19, click here. Me. COVID? What? Air France. For any other subject, please renew your request here. And then... Absolutely nothing follows. No link, just more blank space. <laughs> no, nothing. Me, what happened to one of our agents? Where is he or she or they or Zay? I'll take any one of them. Shockingly, no one contacted us. Back onto public Twitter, I go. Me, Guillaume of Air France sent me this message below to make it look like they were helping. I DM'd him and got their terrible AI, which just keeps asking me if I want to make a reservation. Um, no, I want my four lost bags. Incompetent. Where is a human 
to help us. I'm starting to get annoyed by this point in the process. Back onto DM as well, restating the back and forth that we had had with fake news Guillaume and fake human Lewis. An Air France reply pops up. Surely this is, quote, one of our agents. A personalized response letting me know that they're on the case. I click on the message. The message. All of our assistants are very busy at the moment. If you want to keep waiting, we'll keep your spot in the queue. Do you still need assistance? Please note, if you do not respond to this message within 24 hours, we will end the conversation. <laughs> what? It turns out one of our agents is rude. I do still need assistance. I am responding to the messages. What do you mean you'll end the conversation? Like, this conversation is not working for me. <laughs> Where are our bags? Where is a human? Guillaume? Louis? Anyone? Me. We want to speak to a human being within the next 24 hours. Air France, you got it. Our assistants are working hard to get back to you as soon as possible. We'll keep your spot in the queue. Our spot in the queue? What queue? The queue is aligned to nowhere. <laughs> back to public Twitter I go, where I tweet about fake news Guillaume, terrible AI Lewis, and the incompetent Air France. Guess what? That finally earned a real response. Only my public shaming of them got me anywhere, which is deeply problematic since most people do not have this ability. Air France on public Twitter. Hello, at Megan Kelly. Artificial intelligence is only used to start the conversation and respond to the most common requests. A human agent takes over after a few hours to provide more complex answers. Be assured we are doing everything possible to solve your baggage delay. Okay, they tell me that they think they've found one bag and that JFK will contact us if it arrives. And it does. Two out of five now. Nine days after our arrival back home, but hey, we'll take it. Two is better than none. Then, radio silence. For over a week, nothing. I'm over the denial and the anger and the bargaining now, and I'm settling into acceptance. They're lost. They're gone. I get it. It happens. My three lost bags is kind of a lot and still not a single conversation with a real live person. No one who can answer my questions like, what are the odds the others will show? Is there no way of knowing where they are with the little tags, like a computer system that could tell you they're sitting in Paris? What's the reimbursement policy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then on Sunday, like a miracle, a text. Yes, a text to my phone. They've had my cell phone all along, those bastards. A text pops up that reads, all three bags will arrive to your house today. It's Christmas in July. Our clothes, our kids' journals, our memories, everything, three bags. Later that day, sure enough, a delivery. And guess what was there? Two bags. <laughs> it's not over. It's never going to be over. What if I try texting back on my phone? Okay, sure. Right. Yeah, right. I return to my only option, Twitter DMs. There I go again. When I get there, a message is already waiting for me. What's this? Could they possibly be on top of the two out of three bag situation? Air France. We can see that the rest of the bags have been delivered. And then, are you satisfied with our social media service? Me. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what I actually wrote was, no. We are still missing one bag. A quick response from Air France. And what is it? Hello, I'm Louis, your Air France virtual assistant, and I'm here to guide you, smiley face. What can I help you with today? Me, OMG. <laughs> your no promise three bags were coming. Only two arrived. Air France, do you have a question about an existing booking? Louis! Louis! <laughs> I write back, no, no. <laughs> I want a human to respond. Air France. Hello, Megan. Could you please advise the tag number of the bag which was not delivered? We await your reply. Me. Yes, they use my name. That's progress. That's real progress. Their comment is situation appropriate. A human might be here. We're back on track. I provide the tag number. Maybe they will now tell me where the last bag is or something. A message pops up. Here it is. My answers. Air France. Hello, I'm Louis, your Air France virtual assistant, and I'm here to guide you, smiley face. What can I help you with today? <laughs> Me. Please see all of my earlier correspondence. Air France. 
Hello, I'm Louis, your Air France virtual assistant, and I'm here to guide you, smiley face. What can I help you with today? Oh! <laughs> and that's where things stand as of today. Now, is it a world tragedy that Air France lost our bags? No, the country has bigger problems. I get that. But the reason I am telling you this story is that I know it's happening to millions of people who feel as frustrated as I do. Folks who do not have the ability to publicly shame the airline over and over to get some kind of a response. People who don't have the time to deal with fake Agent Lewis and his inane requests and incessant smiley faces. We are nearly three weeks out now from our return to the U.S. And would you believe in all of that time, I have never spoken to a single Air France employee, not one, for five lost bags, despite the public tweets and all of it. Air travel, as you know, is not cheap, right? Neither is checking bags. The airlines do their level best to make you pay however they can. Half of them charge extra for a snack now, never mind a meal, or if your bag is too heavy, or if you want the crappy headphones. The CEO of Air France, who took a bailout from the French and Dutch governments during the pandemic and then went on to reportedly pocket over three million bucks in salary and bonuses last year, actually bragged in the press two weeks ago, quote, the ability to pass on higher costs to customers is unbelievable. Really? Maybe you could put some of that money into customer service, into baggage location technology, into Guillaume's pocket so he's motivated to follow up, into your terrible AI, which gives false hope and then harassment. My point is, I realize the airlines are under a lot of strain, but business is great for them right now. They're on track for record profits. Air France clearly feels zero guilt about charging its customers exorbitant fees and its customers have a right to expect basic services like safety, on-time departures and arrivals, and yes, our bags in a timely manner. Air France, you failed. Au revoir, Guillaume. Frowny face, Louis. Are you tired of feeling like someone's always watching you on the internet? Maybe the advertisers know too much about you. It's odd. Or you, you're just concerned about the privacy of your identity. Using incognito mode will not solve the problem either. IP Vanish VPN is here for you. They will protect your right to privacy and help you stay anonymous online. IP Vanish helps you safely browse the internet without exposing your private details to these third parties. You can use IP Vanish on your computer, your tablet, your phones, even devices like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use IP Vanish, all of your data is encrypted. IP Vanish makes you virtually invisible online. It's that simple. IP Vanish is right now offering an incredible 70% off their yearly plan for our listeners with a 30 day money back guarantee. That's like them giving you nine months for free. IP Vanish is super easy to use. All you do is tap one button, you're instantly protected. So take your privacy back today with a brand rated 4.6 out of 5 on Trustpilot. Go to ipvanish.com slash Megan and use that promo code M-E-G-Y-N to claim your 70% savings. I-P-V-A-N-I-S-H dot com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.